so in, in my own academic work, you know, I, I, I think that I'm arguing that if you try to understand consciousness and intelligence as coming from the brain and from some kind of, you know, detached self, you're going to get confused. It, it leads us with these kind of insoluble problems. As soon as you understand it as coming from nature and seeing us as nature, um, it makes a lot more sense. So I think it allows you. But wait, would you, kind of would you elaborate that a little bit? In what sense yeah. does consciousness, can we think of consciousness as coming from nature? I'm very interested in that. Yeah, so my so my own um, work around this is I propose something called the living mirror theory of consciousness, which is arguing that consciousness arises from um, all, it's a feature of the life process, basically. It's not inherently a feature mm -hmm. of brains. It's deeply associated with brains and creatures like us, um, but that we shouldn't mistake that correlation for the causation. And so it's really embodied organisms surviving that brings into uh, brings awareness or experience consciousness whatever word you want to use brings it into existence so as you say a plant's consciousness would be very different to ours it won't have language it won't have the same kind of concepts but there would be a feeling tone there would be some the lights would be on they're not just um you know rocks might just tumble with no no feeling but a plant has some subjectivity um and, and is once this you... inherent in in um, in matter? No. So this is not a kind of panpsychism, right? It's this popular idea at the moment that consciousness is everywhere. So this is is that right. consciousness is very much emergent. There were the, the lights were off for the longest time, and then the idea is kind of if you look at the thermodynamics of being a living system, you kind of um, you know you're not created by someone else. We can create a machine and we can put in the the principles that allow it to propagate itself but a kind of a living organism needs to kind of pull itself up by its bootstraps and I think I'm arguing that that process is one where consciousness kind of comes into existence as a way for you to kind of to anchor yourself to your environment avoid things that are destructive move towards things that are good for survival and there's this basic thermodynamic trick of, of survival um, entails an attempt to know the world beyond and so mm -hmm. to what we're talking about I'm saying that once you take that perspective the problems of consciousness go away. Like the, most of the problems we have in consciousness research are there are kind of manufactured because we insist that other animals might not be conscious or plants aren't conscious. And so then we say, well, what is it that makes us different to them? If you actually take away that imposed purely a kind of, you know, uh, very associated with the kind of Western perspective that we are, you know, since the Bible, right, we've got humans being the kind of uh, separate to nature. Um, once you take the other perspective, I think these problems fall away. And this is also a common, or not common, but this is also uh, the case with intelligence. There's, there's a lot of people who argue, you know, and I'm sure you know the work on plant intelligence. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's not that James is intelligent and the brain pulls the levers. It's a kind of bottom-up emergent phenomenon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fascinating. I'd love to read some of your work about that. Yeah, yeah. I can send you over a paper. That'd be wonderful. That'd be great. Yeah. I mean, psychedelics raises lots of interesting questions about consciousness. People often, uh, after psychedelic experiences, question the most, you know, the more materialistic, brain-based ideas of consciousness. And I think that's interesting in itself. Um, why should that be? Well, I think it has something to do with this sense of connection we're talking about. Um, and the fact that well, I don't know. I don't know exactly why that is, but but it just it's hard not to mess around with psychedelics and not become interested in consciousness. I mean, I, you know, the experience is so much about it. And also the, the, the relativizing of your consciousness, the, the idea that it doesn't have to be the way it is every day and that, yeah, we change it every day with caffeine to some extent. You know, we sharpen our consciousness. We're more, you know, um, more focused. Uh, and, and somewhat and a slightly different feeling tone from from that. But psychedelics suggest that it could be a whole other way to be conscious. And um, and that suddenly you realize that it's not consciousness is not as transparent as you thought it was. Um, and that's and that gets you thinking. Um, yeah, I certainly get me. Thinking. I've been thinking a lot about consciousness since I had these experiences. Haven't figured anything out, though. You figured some stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right. The word transparency is very important there because that's you know, a, a term philosophers use for this feature of consciousness that we typically, if things are working normally, we kind of see through it. We don't even notice it. You know, we see an apple in front of us and we say, there's an apple in front of me. We don't say it's a kind of this ephemeral thing appearing in my consciousness. But then you take a psychedelic and suddenly things are melting. And you, you I mean, the question, where is this happening, 
suddenly it becomes very vivid, which might not be something you've ever asked yourself before um, as you're kind of yeah. using your mind in a task kind of positive way. Yeah, and the, and the whole idea too that the mind is actually generating perceptions, um, you know, predictive coding uh, suddenly seems more real because you can see the predictions kind of going off in one way or another. Um, so the idea that there's more of an inside out uh, flow of information to perception rather than simply a window bringing stuff in, suddenly you're, you, 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 you can imagine that the brain is predicting things and, and is making stuff up, is a, is a great manufacturer of perceptions, not just the receiver of perceptions. And you feel that, I think, on psychedelics. Um, uh, but on the other hand, you also feel like the world is stranger than you thought. 